been been coming to the East Coast, but I guess I have, I believe they opened a terminal in Jacksonville too, someplace. Okay, well, well we will get to it. All right, so we got a lot of people signing yeah. in. Uh, well, Great. people are still signing in, and I, I just sent out a call them all message to everybody that, that registered. Mm -hmm. um, about thirty five people coming on tonight. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll get rid of some of the housekeeping. And if you're looking okay. on your computer or on your tablet, you'll see a little uh, box like this. And I just kind of want, want to kind of tell you what it's all about and how it works. Uh, the thing you have to remember here is this little grab tab number two. If you go ahead and you click on that, it'll go away. And then you click on it again, it'll pop back, and you can get into any of the different things that you might need. Number three is a toggle window. So when May Trucking comes on, Darlene comes in from May Trucking. Uh, you may want to go to their website so you can have one, one box up with us watching the webinar and then you can also go ahead and even start your uh, application for May Trucking as well. Uh, number four is the hand icon and I'm going to ask everybody to go ahead and click on their hand. This lets Rob and I know that you can hear us okay. So if I get everybody to click on their hand, thank you Nick, thank you Pat, thank you Paul, thank you Peter, Thomas, Ralph, Michael. Uh, Zachary, okay, and I can put all those hands down in one quick swift like that. Uh, number five is the microphone icon, and tonight everybody has a, a red line through it. We're in a listen-only mode for the first part of the webinar tonight. Uh, when Darlene gets here, we will go ahead and uh, open up the microphone so that you can ask questions. Um, number six is the audio pane. Uh, select the audio format, click the audio setup, select the mic and speakers, okay, uh, and there you go. Uh, you have the questions pane. If, you, if you're feeling a little shy tonight, you don't want to talk in front of lots of different people. Uh, there are no silly questions. We, I think Rob and I, we probably heard it all, right, Rob? Just yes, about Andrew, yes, for you know, sure. You know, you know, Rob, I was just looking. This is our sixth year of live webinars every Tuesday night. Is it really? Gosh, that's Six unbelievable. Years. I don't time. It doesn't seem that way, does it, Andrew? I know. No, I it flies. It flies. Yeah, it's really, it's really. All right, so you type your question in, and then you hit the send button or the submit button, okay? And then if you wanted to call your friends and family and say, hey, May Trucking is on tonight, and you want to find out more about them, uh, by all means, you would just give them that nine-digit code on the bottom of your screen, not the one that I'm using in this example. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can go to join, go to meeting.com, put that nine digits in, and they would be on with us. Quick overview of what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about who we are. Uh, we're going to talk about the trucking industry. Uh, we're going to talk about our truck driving school. And of course, what it is that we're going to be able to do for you. So Rob, uh, while we're waiting on Darlene, why don't you go sure. ahead and talk a little bit about who we are, and uh, I'm going well, to see if I can find a phone number for her. You did, sure enough. You know, this is something I've, I've always been pleased with. You know, I started back in the industry as a Teamster driver, and then uh, eventually when I moved to Florida in 73, became an owner-operator, and since then been involved in all kinds of tr trucking situations and all times of recruiting and so forth. So there's not too much about most of the guys myself don't know about the industry. Anyway, we started back in 78 as a proprietary post-secondary vocational educational institution, and this is something that we've been always been committed to providing the strong curricula, the curricula that the students, when they come out of school, they're going to work and they understand the industry. Programs here emphasize practical and usable skills, of course, and these have been blended with a relevant general education foundation. A caring environment, yes from guys like Andrew and I who have been out in the field for years and all the rest of us in the same way, that personal attention and that faculty-student interaction is so important for the instructors. They're very, very close to our students. They keep their eyes on the students. They direct the students. And this is what it's all about. And these are the key things of making a successful school, especially in the trucking industry. That's why they love us. That's why they're here all the time. Anyway, we also have that great one particular combination of two words, the open door admission, don't we, Andrew? This is a great yeah, thing. Yeah, open door admission back. policy, Rob, is, is, is kind of a big deal because, you know, there's a lot of schools, you know, that work, uh, you know, like the college programs that every semester. they got a new class and it's 12, maybe 16 weeks long. Or the uh, you got these other ones that you know you know every quarter they have a new a new program. We have a new program every other Sunday, and what's kind of cool about our program 
is that we we basically um, uh, you start with the same instructor and you go through the whole thing with the same instructor all the way through, uh, which is a, is a really big deal. Um, you get to know your instructor and you feel very very comfortable uh, with that. Go ahead, Rob. Oh, there we go. This is this is where it all started, Andrew. You know, actually, we were starting even before this, but this was specially built in 1987, and this is the only thing that was ever designed that we can find throughout the United States as made a, to a professional truck driving school. Anyway, we're going to get into a little bit more. We just want to point this out quickly. State of the art, art training facility, no doubt about it. Mile and a quarter, multi-lane highway. You train and. And the first week here, you're on that driving yourself. Well, without a license, you don't need to because this is our CDL. This is our this is our private area here. So we give you a chance really to build up your your character, your desire, your your fears about driving a larger vehicle. We're, we don't want you to be intimidated. We're going to wipe that all away from you. But you know, this has sort of proved itself over the years. We've graduated over 38,000 students since 1978. I think that sense sounds quite you know that's Quite an impressionable thing, Andrew, when you say that. You know, my God, 38,000. But anyway, here we are. You know, we're also approved by many different agencies. And, of course, one of the first ones were vocational. Uh, and, you know, this is a fully licensed by the Commission for Independent Education. This is very important to us. Dante's improved our uh, students coming through from the military, whether they're coming in straight from the military or they're retired or whatever, just get out under the 10-year plans. This is great. This is where they'll come for their training, and they come from all over the country. You know, we're licensed by the Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. And what this all means to the student who comes here is value and, of course, definitely employer recognition. They recognize our graduates every time. So important. Sure. Uh, Andrew, you want to translate it into a different game? Press okay, what uh, trucking companies, uh, why do students travel? from all over the country to attend national training, Robin. This is a, is a good yeah. question. We have a very comprehensive, it's a very well-rounded program. We're not like those Monday, Monday schools out there. We're not like the CDL mills that may not be uh, what they seem to be. They only teach one thing, and that is to uh, hold that steering wheel between the, the two white lines. Right. That's right. And, you, know, you talked just before about the community colleges, and you know a lot of those programs are less expensive, and and some of them are really good programs. The problem I have with them, though, is they take way too long to complete. You know, you're talking about 12, 16, 18 weeks long. This program, Rob, that you're talking about here with national training, four weeks long, week five you're getting paid, week six you're getting paid, week seven you're getting paid. So any money that you saved by going through a community college program, you lost in valuable pay. So we offer a very high-value education at a very reasonable tuition in a very, very short amount of time. Now, we have, we're licensed by the state of Florida and recognized from coast to coast by major motor carriers. We have that straight state-of-the-art training facility and uh, representative equipment that's being used in the industry today. We have very, very convenient financing packages. and. Uh, you know, what it all boils down to is we offer the most hands-on training in the shortest period of time, a training above and beyond just getting that CDL license, and a very, very successful placement assistance program. And many of the trucking companies recruit from uh, national training. Well, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, national training difference. There is such a difference, Andrew. I mean, this is what I tried to... Just in a few minutes of starting off the program, I just want to emphasize that National is designed so that a student and an instructor get very close. They get not only just, as you said, holding that steering wheel between the two lines. There's so much more than that. Getting out on the actual highway, driving an 18-wheeler, getting the feel of it, getting the, um, the moment of, of truth when you're there out on the highway, you're in the traffic, and things happen, and to be aware of those things that are happening. We try to emphasize these things constantly. You never know. You're driving a vehicle that's many, many tons and coming down the highway. You're in control. There's nobody else there. You've got to remember this. You've got to understand that this is so important 
to the industry, to the trucking company, to yourself, to your family, that you've got to be always on guard. You know, you never know. When you're driving, I drove many, many years. God forbid I had no problems. But these things can happen so many times. You know, the little old lady who's in front of you, she's got her left-hand signal on and decides to turn right. These things happen. Now, of course, they've got a lot of these emergency things on the, on the vehicles now that slow you down when you get too close. But there's other things, too. Some of those little emergency things sometimes don't work, even designed. I mean, a lot of the companies still don't have them. You've got to know these things. You've got to be out there. You know, that means the right training. Me, training means job security, and it's security for your wife, your family, yourself, everything. I mean, this is what it's all about. So just remember, when you come to our school, it's going to be always a safety orientated session too. And of course, Rob, national training is where the trucking companies come for uh, new drivers. And I just tried to get a hold of Darlene uh, at May Trucking, mm -hmm. and um, with with no avail. Mm -hmm. Seems that everybody has left their office. Um, so we can uh, maybe just kind of quickly go through the slides. Um, okay. They're celebrating their 70th year. Um, in business, um, very looks like a very very um, nice company uh, to work Pittman for. Looks outstanding. Yes, it really does. Okay, quick history is May Trucking yeah. uh, Company began in Peyote, Idaho, in 1945. A long time, pulling mm -hmm. sacks of cement right. to construction sites. Today, May Trucking operates a fleet of more than 1,000 tractors providing transportation services for refrigerated and dry products throughout the United States. Our company has operated centers located in Salem, Oregon, uh, Payette, Idaho, Layton, Utah, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, Denver, Colorado, Gary, Indiana, Nashville, Tennessee, and actually it's Pensacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. And we have a lot of students yeah. to come from that pencil, um, Pensacola area. Mm -hmm. Celebrating right. over 70 years in business, uh, May Trucking Company knows that our people make us successful. We employ only the most talented drivers. They have the latest technology and the best equipment uh, to ensure that May Trucking Company remains second to none. Very nice. Uh, due to our excellent safety, compliance, and vehicle inspections uh, record, the state of Oregon recognizes May Truck Company as a trusted carrier. So they have special license plates on the May Truck and Company tractors that identify our drivers to the public and to the enforcement agency among the safest and most compliant driver uh, in the nation, Rob. And that's a pretty big deal, that's isn't it? That's quite good. Yeah, I've never heard of that before, Andrew. That's really a first. And that's you know. great. You know what I mean? When they go out, the state actually goes out and does that. That must really mean that the company is outstanding as far as their safety procedures and so forth. That's great. Absolutely. And uh, you know, then we talk about the different regions um, that they operate in, and you know, these would be areas also that they hire in as well. Uh, Salem, Oregon, is their corporate headquarters. Uh, Payton, Idaho, operations center. Lake Utah, the refrigerated division. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, is an operations center. Uh, Denver, Colorado, they have an operations center. Gary, Indiana, an operations center. Nashville, Tennessee, and Pensacola, Florida, operations centers. Uh, off our coverage, Salem, Oregon is their he headquarters. Uh, single point of contact or regional. Uh, nice. Mm. Peak management, advanced planning, engineering fleet, brokerage. Okay, so they're going to make sure that you always have freight. That, that's what that says to me. Uh, making an appointment, um, it looks like it's all done online, all mm -hmm. electronic, and the trailer pool management. So they do a daily yard check, local fleet check. Uh, so they're keeping track of their equipment uh, very, very well as well. So um, lots lots of different services. It seems like they really have their stuff together there. And Rob, you, you know something about these these trucks here. Yes, and they are. Yeah. They're, they're Andrew, about they're having running. a thousand trucks. Factory. Yeah. Uh, and they look these, pretty nice too, don't they? I don't think they're more than look like no more than three years old at the oldest of that. Doesn't right. Really. And uh, so they use Freightliner, Cascadia's, International Pro Stars, and uh, and Peterbilts. Right. And, uh, Very nice. I like I like those Peterbilts. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. You got good taste, Andrew. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm kind of looking at the, uh, the different things here. All air ride, of course, equipped pro driver. Let me go back to that real quick. Um, Michelin steer and drive. Michelin steer and drive. The walking sleeper. Okay, so these are kind of extended just a little bit. 300 gallon fuel capacity, Eaton Fuller, 13 speeds, all 13 speed trucks. Uh, really nice. All right. Uh, Say so that you must meet certain requirements in order to operate a commercial motor vehicle. So, Rob, a lot of the same things that we put in our webinar about. Um, what are the qualifications? That's exactly sure. the way May hires. Right online. You got to mm -hmm. right be 21 online years of age. Must be able to read, write, speak English well enough to converse and understand traffic signs and respond to official inquiries or fill out required forms and reports. Must have experience or training to safely operate the type of equipment you drive. Okay, so that's the training certificate. That's what they would get with us. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Must pass a required physical exam, a DOT physical, and are physically qualified to drive. That's a DOT physical, an eye test, a hearing test, ear analysis. Uh, must have passed and be issued a certified uh, of driver's road test. So that's your third party that's test, right? Yeah, but we do that right here, don't we? Yeah, right here. Okay. Must provide your employer a list of any violations for which you've been convicted in the last 12 months. Wow. Okay. Uh, most most other companies are looking for you know five to seven years, so that, that's pretty right. good there. Well, they they uh, probably want to know every little thing. It's not necessarily they're going to disqualify you, Andrew, and that. Yeah, they're, they're just saying they're, they're just saying for twelve months, though. So that's twelve months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, must not be disqualified to drive a commercial motor vehicle. That's obvious. Must have right. a valid operator's license for the class of vehicle that you're going to be operating. So which would, in this case would be a Class A license. Uh, start your career off right after graduating from your accredited school accredited your, mm -hmm. with right. uh, MTC, or the May Trucking Company, to lay the foundation for your successful career. We will help you hone your driving skills while showing you the ropes in the industry. Uh, the length of your training is entirely determined by your skills. And uh, Iwi was telling me that she had quite a couple of students that have gone through May, you know, one of them went through uh, two weeks out there with one of their company trainers, the other guy went five weeks. So mm -hmm. it depends upon you. Um, yeah, but you can show the uh, trainer. Now yeah. this, part here, right. this part here really interests me, Rob. It says there is a flat pay option. Sign up for this option after you solo out and you're guaranteed 735 a week for the first 90 days. Mm. So this mm -hmm. option guarantees you a paycheck regardless of your mileage. At the end of the 90 days, you'll be paid a bonus for performing the above um, 735 a week average. You can't lose. So that's that's huge. And, and I see more and more companies kind of going with the with the guarantee. Uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty yes. good. But when you, you know, I asked them, I asked them a little bit about their pay schedule. And um, this is what they did. When you're out with the uh, with the um, when you're out there with the trainer, your minimum is six hundred and thirty dollars a week. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of the other companes we you know we hear about you know four fifty to five hundred. Uh, so right. that, this is this is pretty good. Oh, right. you, That's pretty good. You, it is. When you're solo, uh, about thirty five cents per mile. You know, with the guarantee of uh, seven hundred thirty. Then that could be more, of course. Mm -hmm. could, could be more, sure. Uh, that would After be your minimum. 90 days. That would be your minimum. And then six months, it bumps up. You get another raise in six months, so it goes up to 36 cents with a guarantee of 805. And I, I like that as each bump that you get, you're getting more and more money. And then after after six months, one year, they're going to give you another three cents per mile, a guarantee of 910 per week. And I'm sure... Uh, and then thereafter, one cent increase per year that you're with them. That's right. So that works out to some pretty that works out to some pretty pretty nice money there. Mm -hmm. Well, the the one thing I do like about them, Andrew, and you probably see that it's right in black and white. You know what I mean? They put it in large letters. It's it's yep. something that they have 
evidently emphasize, you know, and they keep it there. Because so you see it's something like that, you know, a lot of times it's in the small print, but that's pretty good. It's right there. Yeah. I like mm -hmm. that. So, um, May Trucking, uh, I was hoping Darlene would be here to, uh, to ask questions. I'm afraid that I wouldn't be able to answer any of the questions that you might have on this because I have not talked with them. Right. Uh, but they did send in the in, in this PowerPoint, uh, so all this is good. Um, so why don't we go ahead and take down their email? If you got a pen and paper, people go to info at maytrucking.com. Info at maytrucking.com. Uh, Darlene is the person that you're going to speak to. Okay. Where is Darlene out of? Did she say where she's coming from, Andrew? Uh, I, Iowa. Calling from? She's from Iowa. And I'm, one, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm wondering if um, it's the time zone difference there. You know, that could be true, yes. That's, that's why we can't get her. That's, that's in central time, yes. Um, so central time, it still would be five something there, right? It would be four mm -hmm. something there. Yes. Right. And I, I call they were closed. So. Um, okay, very good. All right. All right, very good. And uh, let's go pop back to where we were, Rob, uh, uh, right here. And, you know, when we hear about companies like May Trucking, uh, you know, we, we didn't hear anything about their benefits, their health insurance, and we didn't hear about uh, the 401K and things like that. And, um, when, I, when I was tuition doing Tuition reimbursement and so forth. Yeah, the tuition reimbursement. reimbursement. I know they have that. I just don't know what it is. Yeah, right. Um, I didn't say. I was surprised. When when uh, you know when I went to the website and I started looking through some things earlier today, um, right. you know, I know that they have that. But uh, you know why drive a truck for a living? And I think that some of the things that we heard there from May Trucking, and of course we've had you know hundreds of other companies come on over the weeks, over the last few years. Uh, there's there's a really good reasons for driving trucks, isn't there, Rob? There certainly is, Andrew. It's, you know, the beauty of it is it's one of the few industries that when you can come out of school like ours after only four weeks and make that kind of money immediately. I mean, we have some companies that are even more than that. And you know that. I mean, they're all different. Sure. You have to study. You have to look at them. You have sure. to come to our webinars and see the difference. But we have all different situations and all different types of companies. Some offer more because maybe the hauling the product is more, you know, out there. More, uh, you know, more expensive or whatever it might be, but it is. It's something that you can easily, even that year, said at the end of the year, uh, end of the year with that company is basically around forty thousand dollars. Somewhere's in there, you can get close to forty. Well, yeah, well, that's, on say, the, that's on the low end, though. Mm -hmm, no, but I'm saying, you know, first yeah. year's earnings coming right out of school between thirty-eight to forty-two thousand. That's safe right there. It's oh, exactly yeah. what you're going to be making. You know, and as I say, people coming out of uh, larger schools, many, whatever kind of industry it is, it's just, you know, whatever you're going to go to, how many people can do that with a four-week training program and make that company? Oh, sure, it's not a nine-to-five job, but, you know, God, you got to put in a little bit of time, you know, to make some money here. And this is exactly what it gives you a chance for your family to start the making some money get the benefits, get all the pluses that are so wonderful in this industry that offered by the industry to keep you there in the industry, to give you the benefits and, and to be able to, you know, really do something for your family. That's a wonderful thing. Right. And this is one of the industries that does this. Now, Rob, when uh, we talk about guess, the, I've been the, here all these years. Sure. <laughs> what is that when, we, when we talk about the huge demand for drivers and, you know, I open up a lot of the industry papers and I talk about, you know, the truck driver shortage. Um, yeah. How did that? So, how does that come about? Yeah, well, there's so many combinations. Number one, Andrew, you know, you've got the the old timers like myself have been out there for many years, and they just said, you know, this is enough. I've had enough on the road. I'm going to haul my, you know, my haul myself. I'm going to retire with the family and get a motor home and start traveling. I don't know why they want to do that, but anyway, I just say that. But anyway, this is what it is. It's just that uh, the industry is losing thousands and thousands of drivers who are going through that. Uh, baby boomer thing and that's exactly right. what's going on and of course then you have you know the situation of all the rules and regulations set up by the DO, DOT, DOT, the new DOT the and, the, yeah. and, the, and the Homeland Security and all the other things that are out there you know these things are just uh, you know a lot of the old timers don't like it and so they're leaving too because of that that's another reason they're not used to it uh, I know some guys, I was talking to some of the drivers that originally, just when they, you remember when the computers or the logbooks went on the computers? Right. 
right. they were fighting. <laughs> Those guys were just fighting a tooth and nail, so they started using them. And then they said they were all right. But some guys probably left over that. There's a lot sure. of different things that, that changed the industry over the years, Andrew. But, you know, the big thing now is that, you know, this it's just that the dry, the companies got cut short on this. They didn't realize this was going to happen. And all of a sudden, right. the industry boom, transportation boom. We're out of the recession right now, sort of. We're going into better times. A lot, of, a lot times. of jobs, a lot of jobs out there today, right? Yeah, that's right. It's just all, it's just wide open. It's just wide open. And of course, and this, so these companies have got caught short. And you know, they're all competing now. So they've right. got all these odds, uh, these odd things. You know, the, the you can't have so many felonies. You can't have this. You can't. I remember when we started. You probably do, Andrew. We could just about get a guy who came out of prison, you know, I mean, to, to, to get into this, but it's very difficult. Yep. It's a little bit harder. There are companies yep. that we have that we work with that that make it a little easier for them, and we can get into that sometime, but the yep. whole idea yep. that it is a, it's a different thing. It's one of the very few industries that you can start making a decent living as soon as you come out of okay. school. That's the big so, thing. So it used to be when people went into this industry, and they're going to be gone for a little bit, it was always about the money, and, you know, the last yeah. survey we did, it was more about the adventure. I mean, the money came in close second, uh, but the adventure, you get to see the country, get paid to do it, um, lots of lots of great benefits um, in the industry. You know, we had this recession. The trucking industry really yeah. didn't get hurt with that. No, um, it did. You know, uh, with all, all the, you know, even with the Obamacare, uh, you know, the, the truck drivers didn't go part-time. They were still full-time guys, like, like what happened in the other industries. And of course, sure. you know, you always talk about the freedom. It might have some other company name on the side of the truck, but you're the captain of that truck, aren't you? You sure are, Andrew, and that's the responsibility that's loaded onto you. And this is one of the reasons that you are getting paid well. I mean, you're the guy who's driving that vehicle. It's got to go from point A to point B. Give me a haul call when you get there and bring it back, you know, safely. That's all I want. And that's what the companies are saying. And do the job, and we're going to pay you for it. We're going to pay it well. And then there's bonuses on top of this. So we'll get into that, though. This, this is something. Okay. All these things are so prevalent, you know, in the industry. Now, Rob, pretty much, you know, a guy going out there today, uh, uh -huh. there's, lots of different, there's lots of different truck driving jobs. We're coming out of school. Most guys are going to go out. They're going to go over the road, probably be gone for 7, 10, maybe 14 days at a time. Mm -hmm. And right. what's really kind of important for them to understand is that that tractor that they're driving is really their home away from home, isn't it? It certainly is, Andrew. It's not like when I started back in the 50s, believe it or not. And this is something, you know, when we did have sleepers, it was more or less lay out, uh, bring blankets and lay them on the seat and prop something up for your head. That was about it. And, you know, and then you, wintertime, the, you, you couldn't. The, the diesel engines cool right down, we, and we didn't have decent heaters and anything. You froze your bananas off. Really, it was it was it really <laughs> no, wasn't so, much fun. But so you know, when you're kind of, younger, maybe kind of you tolerate it. You know, yeah, they, they don't have any better. You don't know any better, right? You know, right. this is the thing. So this is what. Look at the equipment. This is about three, four years old. These these uh, Kenworths here. But look at the size of that bed. Now that's ideal for a couple of wife. You know, no, that'd be like a husband and wife, husband and wife team, maybe. Yeah, isn't that great? Isn't that great? With and you got the sound retention. You know the, the tufted ceilings and walls for sound retention. Of course, there you have the separate controls there on the left hand side because you get the extra. You know your own so you, air you get, versus. You get, the, you get a heat, heat back here and maybe air conditioning up on the front, or vice versa. Sure, and they usually have in that far corner, which we don't see, is going to be another television that they can lay in bed and watch it when they're off the road, you know, and just taking it wow. easy and everything, you know. And then, of course, there's a refrigerator microwave on the other side. Now, all these are not provided by the companies, but they will hook them up with, by their own mechanics, most of them. They like that, right. you know, to be able to get into the, they have their inverters there. Anyway, there's a little bit of turnaround here. This one's a little bit different. That's similar to what they have. It looks like they have windows in all of their trucks. Uh, the ones we just saw there from uh, May. And anyway, there's a bed. Like that's a more or less for a double. A, a, a bunk, yeah, a bunk bed here. Yeah, your bunk bump swings right down. And, of course, there you can see your second seat turns right around there, a little twist seat, and you pull, pull out that little shelf where you can do your, you know, whatever log books or, or whatever you want to do, your readings and so forth. It's got there your TVs on the wall. And of course, the way you don't you don't see a lot of your other hookup things, but, but it's all in there. It's all compacted and so forth. And up there, that top screen, that more or less, we want to show you the width in there between the seats. You get wrap around steering wheel. That's kind of neat. You know, it's right, like the right there in front of you. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, this wrap around, I said wrap around steering wheel, wrap around dash. And of course, it's, we want to just show also the height. Six two, foot two, six foot three guy can walk straight back there without even bending. It's really neat, very comfortable inside. But of course, one of the finer piece of equipment, what we think is the one that yeah. we're going to show in a second. This is the Volvo, Volvo. This is the Volvo 740. And Rob, um, what was the name of the company? The Abilene. 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 Now, yeah. right? Now, They're out of Virginia. Good, uh -huh. We had one of our graduates. Uh, him and another guy came in from Abilene. And uh, it was one of, the, one of the job fairs we had, and uh, they have he he drives. This is his truck here. And, I mean, this is like driving a motorhome going down the road. It it's, is, isn't it? It looks just like it. Believe me, it's it's, a, it's really comfort. It's really comfortable looking thing. It's just everything's yeah. confined. You know, there's there's nothing. You don't see anything. Everything's behind your doors. They just open them up, and everything is right there. Your That's TVs, right. everything. All it's in, really great. All storage too. Yeah. Everything, everything. It's yeah. really beautiful. Really, really, setup. really yeah. nice, a nice, nice outfit here. And, and, and then, then you go show, to the I right one with the bunk, I brought one with the bunk down. Yeah, and this, yeah. This there turns it into is. a twin. This turns into a twin here. Right, um, exactly. Bed there. But look at this. The drawer pulls out, and it's a sink. How it's cool that is sink. that? That's why I say everything is hidden. Everything is right there at your fingertips, and it's that really neat. Too cool. And I look there up on the wall. I never see. You can see a picture of your microwave too, sitting back in here. It looks like a cup up there in a the corner. You see it up there in the far. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. It's yeah, really a right. beautiful piece of equipment. How many guys or girls that are on with us tonight are thinking about maybe owning their own truck one day? Go ahead and just raise your hand um, if you think about owning your own truck. Good. Well, good. Quite a few. I want to look at this uh, international. And pretty much you yeah. can – you can uh, – you can pimp out any kind of truck that you want, whether it's a Peterbilt or a, a Freightliner or an International. Um, you know, when you're buying it, you can spec it any which way you want. Any which way you want. He's got cherrywood floors, uh, very very nice. He has, uh, you know, you pick the color of the leather, uh, the, what kind of cabinets he wants. But you know, what I like most is 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 the top part here, the dashboard. Uh, it has all the backless cages, very easy on the eyes. All of the controls right there. It has Bluetooth built right in. So no problem with the phones and things like that. Everything, everything. So just just a nice, nice looking truck. Right, um, so beautiful. As an owner operator, uh, you can you can make that truck any which way you want. Let's go ahead, Robin, and talk about the different types of trucks. Sure, sure. You know, most of our students coming out of school, they're four weeks. They're all biting the bit to, you know, to get going. They can't wait. I suppose that last week is really pulling at them, you know, wow. Well, anyway, we got the company standing by. Most of our com our students are pre-hired even before they leave, so they know where they're going at this time. Some of them don't, but they, some of them want to plan other things. That's fine. But the whole idea of is most of our students want to go OTR, over the road. And of course, it's a great pay scale, as we say, starting out between 38 to 42,000. You're going to find out all these things from the different you know, the uh, recruiters that come to our school, and normally we get probably four or five, six of them before uh, during your four-week session, so you have a chance to really talk to them on all different areas. Bonuses and incentives, no doubt about that. There's always things that are going to be incentives, your safety awards and all these things. You're making your terminal time. Fuel incentive awards, these are all extras that, are, of course, these companies lay out. Top of the line equipment, tuition reimbursement, that's important, and that all of our companies have that. Advancement opportunities, yes, you can go beyond, you know, being just a driver if you want. You can advance maybe going into safety orientation analysis or maybe recruiting or, you know, all, all there's so many areas here, and they always hire within because this is where, you know, you're talking to another ex driver and, yeah, get a lot of respect from that. Serious money and benefits. This is combined with a whole new lifestyle, of course. A lot of people sometimes, you know, it's a little bit different, but you are out there, you're making money right away. And then, of course, we have companies that have a combination of things. We have the regional driving, and this is hauling freight of all kinds, of course. You remain primarily in a specific area of the country. Most of the uh, guys who run 
that I know of and uh, ones that come to our school and we talk to the other some of the other companies that do this uh, they're usually in usually a tri-state area like for example wherever you are so you're home usually guaranteed pretty much on the weekends or might be during the course of the cost of, uh, or during depending where you live you might be home almost every other night and some guys maybe night nightly it all depends on a carrier and you'll find these things out that most offer weekly home time pretty much great pay, steady runs, company benefits, and all of our driving jobs that come to our school, the companies do offer tuition reimbursement. So that's another now, thing. Rob, I've got, got a question here from uh, Patrick, and he says that yeah. his brother is riding a, uh, he's saying a dedicated rent. Is that the same as regional? Well, it's pretty close. The difference between regional is that you could be pulling just pretty much freight in a certain area. Dedicated means that your company is pulling trailers. It might be from uh, Lowe's or it might be from Home Depot or it might be from, you know, Target. The whole different. You're pulling their trailers and it goes only to their stores. So pretty much you know where you're going, which a lot of guys like because it's pretty much standardized and you're home. You can almost visualize when you're going to be home. It's a great thing to get into, and you can always put in for that. You get all the same thing as your regional if you're looking on this board here. Same thing, the benefits, everything. Nothing changes, and, of course, tuition reimbursement. But it's just that it gives you a little more opportunity to, I think, to, to point your life in a direction, know that you're going to be there and, and home to your family. Anyway, that to me, because I know my son was driving for um, that particular type of a situation. So it, it's, it, it was good. He loved it. It was really nice. So that's nice, Very too. Good. Very good. All right, then there's our local guys. Then the local jobs. Okay, a lot of guys, maybe they've been, you know, this type of thing is, is designed for a student who doesn't mind going in and out of stores, maybe, maybe 30, 35 times a, a day, maybe more. I mean, it depends. You're running into, you see the trucks pull into the restaurants and the small stores. Somebody's delivering freight to, the, you know, the, the uh, local markets. You know, it requires multiple stops every day requires usually unloading, not loading. The loading is done usually the night before, but you have to also be able to handle yourself as far as proper unloading. You've got a little bit more paperwork to do because you're probably counting off the freight. But, you know, you're making a decent wage. You know, there's some, some well, companies yeah, that pay very, very well. You won't get paid by the you're uh, not mile. Pay, no, you're not going to get paid by the mile, and it probably will break down a little bit differently, you know. But you know, it's, it's some guys want to be home with that nightly skill, but you are handling the merchandise, and some guys don't want to be in and out of the truck. When you're running long distance or regional, you don't usually have to touch anything, and that's usually the nice part. You go from point A to point B and then back, or, you know, maybe three or four stops and then back. So, I mean, there's a little bit of difference. Anyway, we know, Andrew, the guy that you had yep. just, uh, yep. a couple of years ago, he was fantastic what he does today. It's really yep. He was else. a guy. He was a guy that he was a dealer up in Atlantic City, and um, he came down. He moved to uh, I think Sarasota or something like that. Came to school here and uh, graduated top of his class. And he went to work for Schneider in their tanker division, and he got a job driving uh, for Schneider tanks, tanker from Fort Everglades, Port Everglades, to Fort Myers three times a day, six days a week. Rob, wow, this guy cleared sixty-five thousand dollars, and he slept in his own bed every night. Every night, yeah. You know, well, so, see, there's the thing, uh, Andrew. Yeah. He has hazmat. That's a little bit of a plus too. You know, that's right, right the, place, right time for sure. Um, you know, but those jobs are out there. You know. Yes, they are. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you're not going to fall into them. Hopefully, you do. But he happened to be there at the right time, and that's what it was. And now, he was now, other, right away. now, the other downside of the of the local driving is. I don't think any of those companies offer the tuition reimbursement. No, no, not at all. No, not that I've heard. Uh, but, I mean, I've heard that some of them offer, you know, because you're making so many drops, there's a lot of different things. A lot of your pay scale is a lot different, Andrew, like you said. Some right. will pay certainly for so many drops. Some will pay hourly. Yeah. I mean, there's 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 a lot of different the percentage, things. But percentage you have of the a lot to get, that a lot, too. Yeah, wrong, exactly. Anyway, it's just, it depends on what you're looking for. Here's a good okay. chart. That'll help us out a little bit, Andrew. Yeah. You know, and I, I always tell students when they come to the school here, you know, they want to know how much can you make. And pretty much I tell them the national average for a, a truck driver is somewhere between 25 cents and 45 cents a mile for an entry-level driver. Mm -hmm. 
and, and I, I think that's pretty right on. Uh, the, the federal government, you know, they, they, they always break it down to an hourly rate. So we look at general freight from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, about a half a million jobs out there uh, at $19.83 an hour or about $41,000 a year. So it's pretty much dead on to what we tell people. Look right. at grocery and related though, right? And, you know, they talk about if there's ever a, a, a strike for truck drivers, that, you know, the humanity would, would be... Uh, it, would, it would be a horrible thing. It would just shut everything down. It would be horrible. Day, so yeah. Three days or something like that. Yeah. yeah so in planning, absolutely. if you're making seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars a week, that's darn good money. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to be a team driver, you know, we didn't talk too much about that, and I, I don't know if May May Trucking does teams or not, but team drivers are, are you know, they, they can make seventy uh seventy five, eighty thousand dollars a piece, hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty thousand dollars per team. Yes. There's no uh, doubt about so, it. So, so that money, that money is huge. Right. That money is huge out there. Uh, the DOT qualifications, I think we covered yeah. that with with May trucking. Pretty much, that was pretty much a standard thing. Yeah. So 21 years ago, I passed the DOT physical, read, write, and understand English language. Pretty much right there on the board. Background that qualifies him or her to possess a CDL. I think they just go by that. <laughs> I don't think they yeah. seem to add too much more than that. It's yeah, really true. Yeah. We have a little bit more. Ours is a yeah, little our, bit more ours, to the yeah, war. You know, ours, I think, is a little bit more difficult, and I think that, you know, we, reason, we, we play it very smart, and, and the bottom line is we want to ensure that you can benefit this training before you start. Are you employable? Are you able no. to get a job? So the things that we look at are going to be things like driving record. You know, um, May Company talks about 12 months. You know, we're going to look at, you know, probably five years. Uh, mm -hmm. felonies, DUIs, things like that. We're going to look at criminal backgrounds. You know, a lot of companies today won't hire you with a criminal background, you know, depending upon what it is, case-by-case -case basis. Uh, the exactly. physical ability, you know, some companies want you to be able to lift uh, 50 pounds, some 25, some 75, depending upon what it is you're going to do. And then, of course, administer that drug screen. We do a drug screen uh, the very first day of school, um, you know, if you, you play around with drugs at all or anything like that, trucking industry is not for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you get into the industry, you're subject to random testing uh, in any company you go to. And it's not that they suspect you or anything like that. Uh, it's just that's what the industry is today. Everything comes down to safety, safety, safety. But the most important thing is we want to see what, um, what your intensity is to succeed. Are you able to get a job. And that's what's most important to us. Right. And the action, day one, right up at the school, you know, got that mile and a quarter highway. Uh, they're gonna, you know, these guys are out here doing pre-trip uh, inspection. They're out there on the mile and a quarter highway. They're going to go to the, the backing pad. We'll show, we'll talk some little bit more about this. And then you, pretty much by the end of the second week, Rob, they're out on the public roads already. Absolutely. And, yes. and you know, very little classroom, lots and lots of hands-on training. Here's an instructor the very first uh, week up there, and he's going over exactly uh, what each one of the um, uh, instruments, uh, where they should be, what what levels they should be at when you're shifting, and what the engine should be doing, what the tractor should be doing, okay, where the air should be at, okay, and then of course our campus. This is our campus, Andrew, and this is something that we've tried and tried. We've looked all over the country to even get close to this, if we could find something like that. But in Denver, I thought Denver would be a great place to see trucking schools. No, there's nothing out there. They have a little pad out there. They were driving one of the major companies. So I'll tell you something. This was designed for professional driving, and there's no doubt about that. There's something that you can start right out the first day and drive on this, and don't worry about oncoming traffic because you're all going. We want to make sure that you, when you look in those West Coast mirrors, you know that there's another you know, 53, 55 feet behind you. This is what it's all about. We want to make sure that you feel comfortable and that your family knows that you're going to be comfortable and getting used to driving before we put you out in a major highway. So this is important. Then let's go over to this little eighth of a mile in the here. You see that? Those little 
little little slots right there where Andrew is. That's that's actually our backing pads. You're going to back in there on the left hand side. That's the good side, and you're going to back in there on the blind side. So you get used to straight line backing, and there's cones in there besides. So we want to make sure that you're really getting in there tight. On the other side, we're going to do some parallel parking. You're going to say, "Wow, parallel parking? Yeah, you'll be doing that. You'll be doing that, and you'll do well at it." And then, of course, that's the next step. And then, of course, we're going to get over here where you're going to be hooking up and docking, you know, hooking up your trailers, hooking up the airlines, really loading and, you know, check and make sure everything is right, and making sure that when you pull out, everything is going to be solid. Over there, we're going to do some pre-tripping. That's the other idea of making sure the companies, you know, will all be doing that for the company. We're going to, it's one of the things that companies test you on. They want to see how you pre-trip, testing out, looking at the tires, the brakes, and the wheels underneath your airlines, etc. Then over here, we're going to get over in this area here. Uh, where Andrew is, that's going to be cones are going to be set up 70 feet where you're going to be backing them down, you're backing your trailer down through there, making sure that it's really, you're running true to form, you're knocking any, knocking any of the cones down. You know, I'm sort of putting this all in one, a little bit of a whole area here at one time. This is not, this is going to be over your four week session, of course. So we're going to do everything. And then, of course, highway driving. I don't want to forget about that. And then getting from your secondary roads all the way out to the state highways leading into the federal highways, I-95, 295, and so forth. We're going to make sure that this is all done properly because we are third party, party testing for the state of Florida. There's no guys in blue uniforms will come in here. We are licensed by the state of Florida to give the final test. That's okay. the beauty of it. You know, so what that happens is, is basically it's four weeks, they graduate, yep. and then they can sit for the state test and, and do it right in the same trucks they trained right on. This, right, right in the safety, yeah, right there at the school, you know, they, the same area. You're not Everything. going to a separate area, going to motor vehicle, whether you don't know where they're going to take you. Everything is done there, and you're well rehearsed before that because we want to make sure. You're going to have to pass the test, no doubt about sure. that. But you just feel more comfortable about it. So this is the key ingredient, I think, that every the students will tell us over and over again. You know, remember, you're going to walk out of there with your CDL Class A license, and that's the big thing with us. That's why your companies that know national training are going to be there recruiting, and this is a big thing, of course, with us. The you know the uh, trucking. Yeah, this is what a little bit of show of our tractors here. We got the day cabs. We've got the uh, sleepers, the next two ones, and then the conventional condos, which are a little larger to the last, to the end there. And we even have some cab overs there that we use. Some of the companies still use cab overs, so we want to get into that. And we have some, most of these guys, we don't run any 13s like May does, but we do the 9s and 10s. Those are the most popular transmissions. Right, the 9s and 10s out on, on the road. I, I think right. we do have on some 13s. I think there are some 13s on the property, though. There might be us in 13s, yeah. but we very seldom use them. Those are usually because they are running coast to coast, I guess. But a lot of them don't. But there's a lot of reasons for that. But anyway, the big thing is that a lot of most of your companies are switching over to your automatics. And we do have some automatics back in the backing pads, which you'll be trying out too. So there's a combination. I don't think we miss too much, Andrew. But the no, next I think one we, got a little, we have a little bit of everything, I think. That's pretty good. We yeah. surely do. We surely do. Now, these are the guys that Andrew's going to show the yeah, majors. I, I think what I'm most proud of are our graduates. And, you know, the mm -hmm. class sizes, sure. they range anywhere from, you know, 24 to 36 students to a class, men, exactly. women, um, young, old, all, every, kind of, every kind of mix and match you could kind of think of, um, yeah. people from all walks of life. And really what, what the best part of this is, is, is these classes become so tightly knit. Uh, you know, everybody wants to see everybody do well. Um, and all of these men and women, they become your network out in the industry because everybody, everybody is, uh, is, is going to different companies. Not everybody's there um, for the same reason. And I, I want to introduce you to Michael Carlisle. And Michael chose national training because our program would provide him with the most behind-the-wheel driving time. So he went out, he actually did some research, he looked up the different companies, uh, things like that. that that's good. Um, and he he got received four serious offers for employment even before he graduated. Is that is that? Um, it's not unusual, Andrew. I've, we've had students had six, eight <laughs> companies that had they did pre-hired. They they were pre-hired by these particular companies. Now that's not really necessary because I think it only confuses the students somewhat. As I sure. said, it's sort of a challenge, I guess. 
but you know you're going to end up in three to four to five different companies that's plenty and then you can sort of get our help because we have our advisors at school who are going to sit down and talk with you. You know, you're not sure. This is where you're going to get some more information on it, no doubt about it. Okay, next we have um, uh, Mark Albert. Mark is a former insurance salesman. Uh, he was a, a foreman in a factory. Uh, he didn't want to sit right. behind the desk anymore. He chose national training because of our great reputation with a professional admissions team and our location. I come to find out that he hails from Keene, New Hampshire. Now, he was here three years ago, I believe three years ago, January, and uh -huh. there, you know, there it was. It was like two degrees in Keene, New Hampshire, and he was down here with just a hoodie. He was probably like 65, 70 degrees in January that's right. yeah. here in Jacksonville, so that's kind of cool. And then Marissa Giles, and Marissa is great. She is a 22-year veteran, former Marine. Uh, our training firm that allowed her to train uh, for her new career while well, she was still on active duty. Of course, we thank her for her service. And we've graduated many, many military veterans over the past uh, 20, 25 years. Now, Rob, career services and the placement process, uh, you were a big part of helping put that graduate to work program. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess, Andrew, I really going back, and you know, it was so tough in those years, going back 38 years. So the companies just did not know anything about schools. We had a lot to prove, and we proved it and proved it and proved it. Actually, we have more companies available to us than we have students at this time. Yeah. And that's a wonderful thing. I love that. I mean, that just shows what the trucking company, what they're looking for and what they're wanting and, and need, and they can't get them. But, you know, this is the type of thing that we're doing the counseling, that one-on-one -on -one session. And, you know, we're doing this because, again, like we showed a few minutes ago, it was just uh, we have all these companies, but some students aren't quite sure. They want to get into it a little bit heavier as far as, you know, what type of company, what do you think? I want to be home on the weekends or I'd like to be home at least every two weeks, whatever it might be. We're going to sort of guide you into where you want to go. We're not going to push you into something that, you know, you're not interested. Some of these schools out there, I understand that we're very limited because they don't have the hours behind the wheel. You know, ours is around 120 hours that you're by backing, docking, driving a highway. This is so important. Some of these schools are like 45 hours. And, you know, they are only can get into somewhere around. They have three or four main companies that they use because that's all they can use. And most of them, their trainers, do most of their training, I believe. That's what I've heard. And that's why they love national training. They have very little, uh, you know, time have to be spent with our students. But in the meantime, what I'm saying is this, that we have these companies available to our students, the local, the regional, the over-the-road because of the type of training that we give here. But this is where we're going to guide them. We're going to guide them into something that they want to do. So their family and, and, uh, and the, they feel comfortable about it. So they leave the school and they say, yeah, this is exactly what I want. And that's our, that's our placement. That's how it works. Beautiful, beautiful. And Rob, I'm seeing we've got a, uh, a lot of questions coming in on the board. Michael Holland, we're going to answer your questions. Michael, Mar Marlon Flores, uh, Alvin Clements, uh, we're going to get to your questions. Uh, very, very shortly. Uh, sure. Where do I stay? And, and you know, the, the simple answer is we got people coming in from all over the country, and you pretty much you can stay any way you want. But if you're looking for the best deal, we suggest the Green Coast Springs Inn. It's located within seven miles from the training grounds. And I would suggest that if you're thinking about coming to a class, go ahead and get your reservation uh, set up. You can call the school directly, get that reservation set up. Uh, they have Refrigerator, microwave, air conditioner, TV, telephone, free local, long distance calls, free internet. Uh, they got a special rate for national training um, uh, students. It's uh, for the about 26 bucks a night. So if you're there for the, you know, the four weeks is is about 638 dollars. Uh, the rooms are. Uh -oh. Did I lose you? No. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. The room. Uh, the rooms are. Um, Double occupancy. We share a room with another student. There's a refrigerator, microwave, air conditioner, TV, and telephone. Okay, I'm having some computer issues here. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, no, you're fine. You're okay. You're fine. Yeah, okay. I'm just waiting for it to, to go over here. 
Is the screen black right now? No, it's got the uh, Green Cove Springs right here in front of me. Okay, well, that's good. Mine isn't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cost, fees, and financing, okay? And, you know, whenever I talk about the cost or the fees or the financing, I always look at the value, and the value is a, uh, as a noun. Um, uh, Green Cove is still here, Andrew. Green Cove still there, okay. Hold on here. Mm -hmm. I think I've just been hacked. Mm. I think the Russians got me. Oh. Huh. Um. Hold on a second here, Rob. All right. Uh, what's it showing now? Still green, Cove. That's good. That's good. I'm seeing all sorts of weird things on my side. Mm. All right. Uh, sorry for the... Uh, I don't think anybody's looking at the blank screen. I think it's just there. We go. No, we're changing now. We're getting into. How are you moving? I'm just closing down some of this stuff so I don't lose it. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to bring this right back up for you. Not responding. Okay, Rob, what do you see now? Now it's black. Okay, now do you see something? Okay, then, yeah. yeah okay, value. sorry, everybody. I'm, I'm, back. I'm back with you here. Uh, the value, the worth yeah. of goods, services, money, or, or object or a person. Think about this for me for a second. Does job security have value? What value does health benefits for you and your family hold for you? What's the steady income worth for you and your family, the value? Do you want the necessities of life today for you and your family? What's that worth? the value. And, you know, Rob, when we talk about these things, um, this quality education doesn't cost, it pays. And in the trucking industry, you're going to earn that steady income, that lifetime full of benefits, the job security, the independent lifestyle, the opportunity for advancement, the retirement plan, you get to travel, and of course you get those paid vacations. Right. Uh, National training tuition costs, is very, very affordable depending upon the individual's needs and qualifications. The tuition cost is about the same as a semester of college. Um, this is a husband and wife team, Rob, and they came through the school. Uh, they've decided they're going to drive as a team for three years. You know, bank as much money as they can bank in the three years and then buy their dream home for cash. You know, very, very doable. Yes, it is. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, it's all good. We have it all. After all, we've been doing this for a very, very long time. We have the companies and we have the jobs. We have the industry recognition. We have impeccable governmental relationships. We have guaranteed tuition financing for everybody. We have over 38,000 graduates that came here before you tonight. We have a program that's really, really fun to complete, and we have an awesome, awesome training facility. Of course, we appreciate all of our students from the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, our post-9-11 GI Bill, Montgomery GI Bill, Chapter 30, 31, 33, 35, all of our Department of Vocational Rehab people, 
um, all of our state voc rehab people, all of our different states that participate in the workforce programs, the WIOA, uh, Ticket to Work programs, all of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, all the different tribes that send their members to national training because they know they're going to have jobs when they come out. Now let's go ahead and open up the uh, phone lines, Rob. And, sure. Uh, I'm going to go to Alvin. Alvin, we're going to make you first. If you go ahead and click on your uh, microphone, you can ask a question live. Hello. Hi, Alvin. Hi, Alvin. What city and state are you calling hey, in from? I'm from Miami. Miami, excellent. Yep, from Florida. Good, good. What's your question tonight? I mean, you know, just because I have kids, you know, I have a wife and things like that, but, you know, she really understands. She's actually very supportive of this decision, so, you know, I'm going to be on the road a lot, but I still want to have time to spend with my family, so I wanted to know the money difference as far as riding out of town and just, you know, driving local. Well, I'll tell you, Miami is a um, great, great place to live. Um, there's not a lot of companies that will hire directly from Miami. So, um, oh, hold on. Let me cut you off for a second. Um, okay. I'm moving to Jacksonville, so I'll probably be stationed in Jacksonville. Okay, so if you're, you're in Jacksonville, if you're north of I-4, a lot of the companies are going to open up for you. All right. Okay. The, the reasoning behind that is uh, they have a lot of, of stuff going into Miami. They don't have a lot coming out. So they, okay. comp trucking companies today, they actually worry about the drivers. They want to be able to get you home for your home time. They want you to spend time with your wife. They want you to spend time uh, with your kids. But if you're going to be up in Jacksonville, uh, the lane, there's a lot more choices than the lanes that you can drive. And uh, we have companies that, that, you know, where you can be home every night. We have companies that you might be gone two, three nights a week, four nights a week, and be home. And then, and then you got the road warrior guys that might be out there seven, ten, fourteen days at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of choice, you know. Not only do we talk about the, you know, the uh, box trucks, but then you, you can go into flatbed, you can go into tankers, you can go into um, all all sorts of other other types of trucking as well. So, so there's a very yeah. good variety of different jobs. And you know what I've always said about Jacksonville, Andrew? Uh, was yeah. I just want to add one thing on this because why Jacksonville? Why the school picked Jacksonville many years ago? Number one, you got I-95 comes straight down from Maine all the way down to Miami, right? You've got I-10 which comes in from Los Angeles and ends in Jacksonville. Straight line driving right on through, all the way through. One of I-10. You got a thousand contain over a thousand containers coming in here every month off the boats. I mean, and you know, remember? I don't know if you remember Andrew. A few years ago, National did a. I forget who was here at the time. It was in the recruiting or in the uh, actually in the uh, yeah actually was doing our placement. Uh, they did a study. It was 156 trucking companies that were based out of Jacksonville. Yep. It was something like that. Actually, you know, in corporations and so forth. So this was what I call a trucking community, if I've ever seen one up here. That's yep. one of the big reasons. That's that's always been that way. Yep. Um, I hope Alvin, that answers one of your questions. How about the company, companies that I would I would have you look at it um, right off top of my head? You know, for a guy that wants to kind of be home a little bit more. Might be a company like Comcar Industries. Okay. And they have like uh, CCC, CT, things like that. But once you get here, we'll really sit down with you and, and we'll go through exactly what it is and we'll hook you up with the right company. Okay. Alvin, are yeah. you in the service or what, uh, did you move up here or what is it? Oh, February 9th, I, that's the, my move date. Very good. Well, if you're, yeah, if you're in Miami now, I think Rob is your, is your rep anyway. Okay. Okay. We'll get to you. We'll see you probably in a, probably tomorrow. I'll give you a call. Okay. Okay. Not a problem. All right. All right. All right. And I'll give you all the fill-ins, all the things you want to know about. You know, break it down and so forth. Okay. Really Let's go to, uh, we're really gonna go to easy. Marlon. We're going to go to Marlon next. Marlon Flores. Sure. Hi, Marlon. Marlon, if you go ahead and click the uh, green button, we can answer any questions you have. There you go. Yeah. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. How about you? Good, good. Um, okay, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Yeah, I do not have my CDL Class A license, but I want to see if I can get it. That's what, exactly um, what we do here at the school. 
That's what yeah. we do. Do you guys uh, happen to have a company that actually will pay for the schooling and then I can actually work for them? Or? Well, yeah, you could do that. That's called contract training, uh, more than again. Um, for some people, that's great. For some people, it's not so good because the problem with them is, is you're going to have to sign a contract with them, and it leaves you not very much flexibility. Um, you know, if you don't like something that they do, you're stuck there until you, you have it. With us, we have a financing program for everybody. So just sit with your sit with your recruiter. Um, he, he can explain the, the contract training to you uh, as well. Uh, but see if you can do it without without having to sign a contract is always the best way. Right. Okay. Do you guys happen to have a like a recruiter in Orlando, Florida, or just uh, Jacksonville? No, no. We we have we have recruiters that handle the whole the whole state of Florida. Um, have, have, right. you, have you have 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 you have you filled up into the website and has any recruiters contacted you yet? Uh, no, actually, C uh, C R England was uh, the one that um, um, I'm supposed to go this weekend to 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 Jacksonville to start my my, my school. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, we, we we do the training for C R England, and they are a great company. What I like about C R England is they have a lot of miles. And their contract is only nine months. Their contract is only nine months, where a lot of the other ones are three and four years. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so that's good. So um, I, I would be your I would be your representative. Okay. You, you should have gotten something from me then in your email. Yeah, I think and, I did. Yeah. Yeah. You send that back right away, because the seats do fill up very quickly, Marlon. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. We'll see, um, we'll, see, we'll see. We'll see you on Saturday. Are you coming up by bus? Uh, that is correct, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll be picking you up at the bus station on on, on Saturday as well. Oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Very good. Okay, thank you. Sir. All righty. Next, we're going to go to uh, Michael Holland. Hi, Michael. Michael, if you go ahead and just go ahead and click on the uh, green button. Michael Holland, if you click on the green button, we can hear you. The green microphone. All right. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can find Michael's questions. Uh, I'm afraid I will lose my screen again if I do it, though. All right, Michael Holland, roughly, what's the cost of the tuition? Um, Michael, the, the, the cost of the program is fifty nine ninety five. Fifty nine ninety five. What is the daily schedule like for school? Well, the first day is ten to five thirty. Every other day is seven a.m. to five thirty p.m. Okay, uh, it's broken on my phone. Okay, you're you're on your phone. Okay, no problem, uh, Michael. I hope that answers your questions. Um, let me see if I missed any of yours. Uh, I've been told by another trucking school that I could not attend with them while working a full-time 40, 48 hour a week. Is this a rule applied to your school? No, that's not a rule. Um, basically, though, you do have to be here, um, you know, from 7 to 5.30, uh, Monday through Friday. So you have to be able to make that work out. Okay. All right, I think that covers most of most of the questions. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody else has a question, feel free to go ahead, raise your hand, and we'll we'll, we'll open up your microphone. Uh, Alvin, you got one more question. Go ahead, Alvin. Go ahead, and click the microphone green, the green microphone. You could ask one more question. Well, go ahead. Hey, my last my last question is: We have to be on campus, right? Uh, not, no, no, not necessarily. Not as I mean, you have to be for school hours. You have to be here, yeah. Okay. You, you, but you don't have to okay. stay with us or anything like that. You can stay wherever you want. No, wherever you want, okay. it's fine. Yeah, you, I mean, if you're gonna be in Jacksonville, you can drive back and forth every day. Okay. 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 All right. We do not have. I'll be talking to you. We do not have a truck webinar next week. Next week we're going to have a heavy equipment webinar. The week after that, the company that's coming in is going to be um, the company coming in after that is going to be 
Carolina Cargo. Okay. Carolina Cargo. Right. That's great. The company coming in. And Rob, you know, we're going to have an open house, but we're going to do it in one of our trucking companies. Uh, and that's going to be on yes. Wednesday, Wednesday right. January yeah. the 18th. Wednesday, right. I'll just put my bid in for that. It's going to be a <laughs> okay, Concord yeah. Industries. It's going to be mm -hmm. a Concord Industries. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be a fantastic thing. It goes from, um, I believe it's 10 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. Something like that. Yeah, and that's hamburgers and hamburgers. Yeah. Now Chances get, for the, everybody to see the equipment and you know we're actually over their terminal. Um, right. Probably some. Uh, I think we're going to have a truck there uh, as well, so we might be able to give some rides and things like that. Right. Exactly. That'd be great. Uh, so that's, that's what things that. are looking at. I want to thank everybody mm -hmm. for coming tonight. Uh, we had a nice yeah. group of men and women on online with us tonight. Rob Nelson, Very thank nice. you for uh, thank you for hosting. You always do such a always great enjoy. job. Enjoy. Always such a great job yeah, of uh, getting the information out there. Uh, if you have more questions, please contact your admissions representative first thing tomorrow, 1-800-488-7364. Your lost time is costing you big money. It's all good. Just make sure you call. Rob, go ahead and tell everybody how to get out of here okay. tonight. Okay, guys, you know, just all you got to do is come to there and see where it says number two. Just hit that file and file. just drop down. And it says exit, leave webinar. leave webinar with your pointer, and just hit that one time. That'll take you smoothly right out. And, uh, you know, the thing with it is you're not caught in here. So, anyway, it's been a pleasure. Look forward to talking to you. I hope you can make it up to school one day, and we'll go from there, okay? Good. And next Tuesday Go night, ahead. we got next Tuesday night, we're going to do the heavy equipment webinar. Heavy equipment next Tuesday night. That's great. Right. I look forward to that, too. It's been a long time. Okay. Yep, it has. Very Thanks, good. Andrew. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks, Marlon. All right, we're clear. Okay, yeah, okay. What'd you think of that, Andrew? Yeah, it's a shame, that... shame the lady wasn't there. It was a kind of a, a lot of good questions. Yeah, it was good questions, I think, you know. But why, you know, what are we getting to screw up about nobody showing up anymore? What is this? I don't understand that. I mean, is, they tell like, we're going to be there. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna flat out blame Ewa. You're going to do what? I'm going to blame Ewa. You know, no, it's our, our job to get people there, and uh, you know, um, I mean, it's just it's it's consistently like this, isn't it? It just seems this, that way. Not, you know, there's not much more that I can do. I know you can't. I know you can't. It's just you know, you know I mean, and I mean, if, 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 if she can't do it, then we'll get somebody else. That's all. I don't know what else you can do. What uh, what else can it be? You know, I I I almost had Larry talked into that, and uh, you know, he, he can't do something to somebody who's sick. No. Well. He's soft. He's soft. Yeah. But, you know, it makes it bad for all of us. It sure does, because we invite all these people, and they're looking for, you know, the type yeah. of guy like that would come out of the girl, whatever it is. And some are good, some are bad. It doesn't make any difference. At least they can pinpoint, because this company didn't have a lot of information there, did it? I mean, you know, not what we're looking for, like tuition reimbursement and some of the yeah. things and their benefits. Uh, and all, all, that stuff, all that stuff yeah. Stephen did. Stephen came yeah. up with all of that. He went to right. the website and did the research. I mean, they, they they did nothing. She sent me an email yeah. telling me it was all set, that she needed a PowerPoint for them. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I did my like, Yeah, a company like May should have all that stuff. I mean, that's 